Hi everyone, my name is Steve and welcome to Joomla 3 Day. This is the second presentation in our Joomla 3 Day. We've just had a presentation from uh, Daniel from SiteGround.com about how to speed up your Joomla website. Later in the day we have all sorts of other presentations about using Bootstrap with Joomla, about coding for Joomla, about using Joomla without any coding, all sorts of different topics. Fotis, I'm going to pass over control of the screen to you now, and I'm excited to see what's new in your new version of K2. Hello, everyone. I'm glad to be here with everyone uh, from uh, hot sunny Greece, uh, 42 degrees Celsius, about 100 degrees Fahrenheit for the for our US uh, viewers. Um, if you don't know K2, I'm going to do a small uh, introduction, uh, what it is, um, and then I'm going to show you uh, the latest version, version 3, uh, which is currently in beta mode and uh, will be um, set in stable uh, as a stable release at the end of uh, September, early October. So, uh, a few words about K2. It's as Steve said, it's uh, currently one of the most popular extensions in the Joomla community. Uh, we've just passed 2 million downloads uh, for, uh, for K2, and the project has been around since 2009. It's essentially a complete uh, content management solution for Joomla. Uh, you could think about it as um, content as the way it should be for Joomla. So K2 is a standalone application built for Joomla. Um, it doesn't interoperate with the Joomla article system at all, uh, but it can work side by side with the Joomla article system. Uh, it's a lot more advanced in terms of uh, both um, uh, content management in the back end for, uh, for, uh, for, uh, for content managers. Uh, but it's also very different and a lot more easy and more flexible to work with in the front end. Since K2 has been around since 2009, uh, it's been able to solve lot, lots of problems that the Joomla CMS has had since then. Uh, if you recall, back in 2009, the, um, the, the primary distribution for Joomla was uh, 1.5, and 1.5 was lacking uh, primarily the uh, nested level categorization system that we now take for granted with Joomla 3. So back then, K2 introduced a nested level uh, categorization system uh, with a very uh, powerful and uh, feature-rich uh, item form, article form, that was able to be extended with additional fields. That is why some uh, call K2 uh, CCK as well, the Content Creation Kit. It's, it's actually a term that, was, uh, that came from the Drupal community. So anyway, uh, K2 essentially allows you um, to be able to have uh, a better content management solution for Joomla uh, that was uh, built for performance, uh, with performance in mind. Uh, it had uh, access control levels that Joomla didn't have at the time, so it allowed for um, better uh, front editing features for users. And it was, uh, and as it proved uh, through the years, uh, it was an excellent solution for uh, uh, basic blogs to corporate media publishing or big news portals. And that's why K2 is now actually powering some of the uh, top Joomla sites in the world. And when I say top, I mean uh, in terms of traffic. So, uh, K2, uh, I'm going to go through the features uh, very fast. I, I do assume that, you know, most of you actually know what K2 is and know, probably know its history. But I'll just outline the features uh, to continue. Uh, like I said, uh, content management is very flexible. Uh, 
We have uh, we can categorize content, uh, tag the content. We can have comments uh, in our content. Uh, it has a great media manager in the back end that allows you advanced uh, 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 media managing of images, videos, and all that. Uh, the new version, which I'm going to show you, now integrates with Joomla's ACL. So from good, we've now gone to uh, a lot better in terms of ACL, and you can you can have granular control of who sees what, both in the front end and the back end. Uh, K2 version 3, which I'm going to show you, uh, builds upon the foundations of version 2, uh, and that means that we've uh, kept 90% of the functionality of the old K2, uh, but we've done, uh, we've, we've gone lots of steps ahead, and now the uh, back end of K2 uh, is uh, similar to a desktop application, which means that uh, K2 is now uh, a lot more uh, responsive, uh, a, lot, a lot faster, and uh, it's built to adapt in any uh, kind of screen, from uh, desktop screens to mobiles. Of course, we continue to allow front-end content management, like with version uh, uh, 2. It's actually a lot better now, because you, you get to have um, you get to see uh, K2 in its entirety in the front end. We continue to uh, focus on performance. Performance has always been a very important factor for us. And uh, for third-party developers, we've uh, continued to extend the K2 API. It's a it's a uh, API is. Uh, uh, it's like a subsystem, let's say, which you can use to extend K2. And uh, uh, we've, uh, we've gone a few steps ahead as well, and we've, um, uh, we've uh, improved the K2 API. This will mean that uh, third-party developers will be able to create more uh, extensions that hook up with K2's content. Let me make a small parenthesis here and say that uh, K2 is actually one of the most popular extensions in the Joomla community in terms of uh, third-party extensions that interoperate with K2 as well. So uh, there are, they count, there are more like 500 extensions currently that interoperate with uh, K2, and that compares to extensions like Virtual Mart or perhaps Community Builder projects that have been around uh, since the Mumble days. So, as I told you before, and before we move on and see uh, the new K2, it's some of the biggest sites in the world have been built uh, with um, uh, K2. Uh, that includes organizations like the United Nations, and more specifically the World Youth Report, uh, the Harvard, Harvard University, the Graduate School of Arts and Sciences of Harvard, uh, ActionAid in Australia, Amnesty in Hungary, uh, Groupama, the multinational insurance company in France, um, the High Court of Australia, MTV Greece, and uh, the UK band Gorillaz. It's, uh, it's quite an honor for us and uh, and my team to uh, to be able to uh, to see K2 uh, you know used in such big projects. Actually, if we if we're talking about Greece specifically, our home country, um, we're very honored to see uh, to know that uh, the number one website in Greece, which is newsbomb.gr, is powered by Joomla and K2. And we're talking about a website with dozens of millions of uh, pages per month. So, I'm going to move on now to K2 version 3. Uh, you probably already see my, uh, my screen, uh, and uh, the OS training team should have managed to have focused on the dashboard of K2. Um, so, 
I've already told you that K2 is now like a desktop uh, grade application. This means, um, contrary to traditional Joomla components, it's a lot faster to navigate within the application. Uh, and we've also uh, taken a different uh, design approach. And as you can see, it's a lot different to what uh, Joomla components usually look like in the back end. And the reason we've done this is, uh, we've actually done this for two reasons. So one reason is uh, we, are, we needed a different user interface in order uh, to be able to adapt to the, te the different technologies that we're using, and that is primarily JavaScript. We use a lot of JavaScript in K2 to be able to, uh, to have K2 perform like a desktop application. And uh, the second factor, the second reason is that uh, the, the Joomla, Joomla 3's user interface was a bit limiting to what we wanted to do. We actually wanted to focus on the content management process. So in order to do that, uh, we, we strongly had to change lots of things. So if you, uh, if you notice the screen, um, the, 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 the components navigation is at the top, whereas in traditional Joomla components, the navigation would be on the left. And the filters, and this is something that we're very proud of, have been uh, carefully either organized or uh, totally hidden. So you only see what you need to see at any given time. And, as you know, and if you notice, I hope my uh, cursor is visible. When we are on our items list, our primary content uh, screen uh, in K2, uh, you only see an add button. You don't see a delete button. You don't see a move button. You don't, you don't see all these buttons that you would see with other Joomla extensions. Uh, let me give you an idea of what I'm talking about, a comparison. So as you can see, we have all these buttons here in the Joomla article manager. The article navigation is here. And the search filters are located here. This is the only user interface, um, let's say, gimmick that we can see in the core article manager. But with K2, uh, sorry, with K2, we've, we've, hidden, we've hidden those things. You only see what you need to see. So, um, We've built this demo site, which has about uh, 10,000 articles in it, items as we call them. Um, we're in, uh, we have two modes uh, when navigating in content in the back end. Uh, we have the traditional pagination option, and we also have the infinite scrolling option. So when you go, when you switch to infinite scrolling, you don't see the K2 footer bar. You just scroll your content, and K2 constantly appends the new articles, the new items at the bottom. So um, let's switch back to pagination. Okay. Now let's navigate through K2, so you can see the responsiveness that I'm talking, the desktop-like responsiveness that I'm talking about. So in categories, you don't see the user interface change entirely. You only see the main content, what's inside, what, what needs to change, that changes actually. And uh, it's near instant. Um, I say near instant because this is, uh, this uh, demo site is hosted on the actual server that the K2 website is hosted on. And we've done this for two reasons. One is um, since K2, the K2 website is quite, um, it's quite high traffic, uh, we wanted to see how, uh, uh, in practice, um, how the new K2 would perform on a server that is already under some stress. And um, 
the uh, the other factor is that uh, we wanted to be able to migrate to the new kit when we're done. So yeah, we're kind of lazy on that, but anyway. So as you can see, it's quite responsive. We've maintained uh, most of the functionality of the old K2, but we've improved functionality um, where it was required. Since the user interface is mobile and tablet friendly, uh, we've uh, taken all necessary steps in order to make it uh, the new K2 uh, work uh, very smoothly on the touch screens. And we've gathered all non-essential parts of K2 in a sub-menu, which you can see here. So I will continue. Give me a second. Um, so um, we'll now see, as I've told you already, we've completely changed the user interface in K2 version 3. Um, the good news is that uh, now that Juba is essentially focusing on uh, version 3 as its primary version, that means uh, K2, will, uh, K2 version 3 will only work uh, for Joomla version 3, not for 2.5. Uh, and uh, this allows us to implement things that we weren't able to implement with Joomla 2.5. And uh, not only that, this translates to less code for us, uh, which means swifter updates if required, and uh, newer features added a lot faster compared to version 2. Let's not forget, of course, that version 2 supports from Joomla 1.5 to Joomla 3, so it was already a tough break for us. So uh, with, let's see how we've changed the new the item form. As you can see, we've adapted things a bit. Now let me remind you here that in order for the this webcast to be have better clarity uh, for the viewers, um, we we have zoomed in on the in on the screen quite a lot. So when you download, so, so what you see here is um, essentially uh, a viewport of around 1,000 pixels. So if you're using K2 on a um, on a laptop, a desktop computer, uh, you won't see uh, some of the elements a bit crammed in. So this this view is essentially a few pixels above the tablet view. So as you can see, uh, we've regrouped things in the K2 item form. Uh, the basic things, the, the basic content, what you will be uh, working with 98% 90, of the times is on the first tab, on the basic tab. We have the title, the alias, the category, whether the item is featured or not, the state, the tags, Okay. Uh, you can select your author here, uh, choose whether the, the item is public, uh, choose the language and so on. We have in this, in this demo site, uh, K2's editor windows are split in two, like in Joomla 1.5. Uh, so you can see the teaser uh, text and the main text uh, the, the, the editor windows for these blue, two blocks uh, separate. Um, and a new block now, the revision notes. Uh, this is because we now have revisions in K2, uh, ver uh, version 3. It's similar to how the um, revision system works uh, in Joomla, but it's, it's actually been implemented a bit differently, actually better. So as you can see, uh, you have revisions in K2 have a visual um, presentation of the changes in time. So you, you get to see the timeline of the changes and who has done these changes. And you get, you get to compare uh, the different parts of text and switch 
to the revision that you wish to switch if uh, if you change your mind uh, you know and want to want to want to switch back. All the metadata, uh, all the information that's secondary, like uh, when the article was created, the item was created, the publishing date, and so on, is is on the third tab. And on the fourth tab, we have all the display settings. These settings used to be on the sidebar, on the right sidebar in K2 version 2. Now we've moved them on a separate uh, tab, so it's easier for you to uh, quickly browse and select what you want. And we've used, as you can see, a different system, uh, different to uh, classic radio buttons. So it's easier for you to spot any changes or overrides to the display settings of an item. Uh, we've we've gone on a similar route with a category um, uh, form as well, but this is currently under uh, development since we're in beta mode. Of course, there's the there's the fifth tab with permissions. This is the classic uh, uh, Joomla ACL block, and you can use that to override uh, the global permissions for uh, for the given article item. So I'm going to switch back to the basic tab, which is the primary content tab for you. Uh, besides the content editors, you'll see that we've maintained the other uh, content tabs, which is for the image. And you'll notice that we now have uh, a button, a new button to choose an image directly from Dropbox. And we plan to add additional uh, cloud storage providers in the future. We have the Galleries tab, and uh, now compared to the uh, previous version of K2, you are now able to have multiple galleries uh, within K2. And uh, again, you can you can even uh, choose to upload images directly from Dropbox, or as always, um, uh, copy paste a link from Flickr. Uh, the same goes for media. Uh, instead of just one video or audio clip, we can now have multiple uh, video or audio clips uh, within K2. Uh, you just add as many uh, blocks as you want. Attachments. Uh, we have refined the user interface so it's consistent with media and galleries. And you already you are already able to have multiple attachments in K2. And extra fields. Extra fields have been significantly updated in K2 version 3. Um, we don't currently have the time to discuss about K2 extra fields because uh, it's a massive improvement. It allows even designers to be able to extend, to be able to programmatically extend K2 with uh, minimal uh, HTML code. Essentially, uh, zero PHP code, um, and uh, this allows uh, for things uh, beyond traditional CCK. And um, what you can now do with extra fields essentially um, diminishes the need for uh, multiple third-party uh, extensions for K2. So if you know a little bit of HTML and CSS, it's very easy for you to create your own fields that extend the K2 item form. And moreover, the user form and the category form. So unlike K2 version 2, where extra fields could only extend the item form, you can now extend both the category page and the user page. So here are some sample, um, uh, some sample uh, extra fields. These are actually the default extra fields built within K2, uh, but it's uh, it's very easy. It's very easy to develop your own. So one could, for example, create a small, um, simple extra field that takes a URL, processes that URL, and provides a different output in the front end. I'm going to switch back now to the items um, uh, to the items view. Previously, I talked about the filters and how we've managed to uh, keep only the things that you want to that you should see in the backend. 
So if you notice, uh, we've kept the viewing filters. So I can, for example, filter the cars category. As you saw, the uh, change was near instant. And we have the two-way filters. That means the filters that uh, reorder your items table ascending or descending by title, uh, by state, by feature state, by category, and so on. We have them here. And you can, of course, combine all these filters. I don't have any items, so, yeah. And as you can see, it's, it's quite faster compared to K2 uh, version 1. A version 2. You can of course go to getk2.org and um, uh, in our blog you'll see uh, the latest blog post uh, on getk2.org um, has more information on where you can download version 3 and test it. Uh, it's very easy if you already have a demo site. You can very easily migrate content from uh, the Zoom article system within K2. And this allows you to uh, quickly have some content uh, come into K2 so you can uh, work with the user interface and see how smooth and fast it is. So let's move on to categories. As you can see, we uh, Categories are nested. Let's switch over to infinite scrolling so we can have a better look at categories. Infinite scrolling is, is a lot better to work with, especially when, uh, uh, when we, you're dealing with small data sets. So like in this case, in the case of categories, uh, it's a lot easier having everything in one page uh, load progressively because it's a lot easier to manage. So now I can literally take the last category and move it over to the top. It's, it's a lot easier uh, compared to how this is traditionally done in Joomla uh, component development. What I forgot to show you is the actions which uh, take place uh, everywhere in K2's lists. Uh, what I told you in the, uh, when I started showing you K2 version 3 backend is that we don't show these buttons, uh, the action buttons like the lead pumps and so on. This is because we show these buttons when we actually select items. So when you select a few items, you will see these buttons here. And these are the actions that you can use uh, for the item. So if you want to unpublish, you just click on publish and that's it. As you can see, the state has changed. These items have gone to unpublish them. And we can publish them back. No need for page reloads. It's, it's very fast. And the good news is that we've also added a new batch mode window, which allows you to move or create copies of the items that you've chosen to different categories, as you can see here, to different access levels, assign items to a different author or copy them to a different author. This is very handy when you have a website with multiple authors. One author needs to leave or change or whatever, and you, you wish you could you know, migrate all the all his or hers uh, her items to another offer, and of course the languages. Likewise, we've changed, we've significantly changed the way ordering is now performed in K2. I'll just reset the filters. And now, let's see. Ordering. Hope it's not broken because we're. Uh, yeah. So, as you can see, the ordering views is a lot different 
Uh, it, it essentially categorizes content under its categories. And we've done that so it's easier for you to see and move items between categories. And uh, of course, if a category has, say, a thousand items, we don't show uh, this, uh, we don't show all the thousand items when you uh, expand a category, but we can do that uh, progressively. Now, remind, I'll, I'll remind you that this is a beta, so some things may not work. And as you can see, yeah, this, this doesn't, this doesn't work, it doesn't have, it doesn't have items. It probably doesn't work. Okay, this, this happens in beta software, but it's, this is something that will be uh, fixed for the stable release. We also have a smart uh, search bar. If you notice, um, when you start typing, uh, the search bar will uh, suggest few items. So you can click on an item, directly edit this item. You can close the sidebar. You don't want to edit this, you just switch back. And if instead of clicking an item, you actually uh, wrote the, let, the, the word and, play, and pressed search, you will see, let me get a different, you will see that the view has changed here. K2 is already showing you uh, the results for this uh, for this word. In this case, it's fermented. So, uh, again, pretty fast, uh, pretty self-explanatory. Um, it's a lot easier compared to the previous version. And as we like to think of it, it's, uh, it's the way uh, the Joomla backend uh, design should be for components. I can reset all these filters now, go back to my primary uh, list. Let's move to, on to the other views. The tag view has remained uh, more or less the same as the old uh, uh, tags view in K2 version 3. So has the comments. Extra fields have been updated. This is to incorporate the new uh, development uh, features that you that you're allowed to have. Extra field groups, uh, as in K2 version three, user groups are essentially a mirror to Joomla's user groups because now um, K2's ACL is essentially integrated with Joomla ACL. We have uh, the users view, which is an extended view of uh, uh, the Joomla user, uh, the Joomla user um, form. You can see the profile, a small a short uh, description of the user, am avatar, uh, gender, and so on. And as you can see, we have some extra fields here in this view, uh, which is what I previously told you that we can now programmatically use extra fields to extend not only the item view but the category view and the user view as well. The media manager is uh, identical to K2 version 2. Uh, this is a great media manager because you have lots of um, uh, desktop-like actions. We now have the utilities view. This is something that we're going to extend in the future. Uh, this view groups some of the features that previously were in um, other views in K2. And this includes the option to import Joomla articles or some maintenance features like the option to delete orphan tags, that means tags that are not assigned to any item, or delete any unpublished comments. In the future, we plan to offer a K2 Pro version, uh, which will allow you uh, to import content from other platforms as well, and that includes uh, platforms like WordPress, uh, Tumblr, and other CMSs.
Finally, the settings page concludes the backend views. As you can see, we've moved all settings from a model window to a separate uh, view uh, in K2, uh, which makes management all these uh, options a lot easier. Now, don't be intimidated by the number of options that you can see here. Uh, these are essentially options that you, uh, as we say, set and forget. These are options that you will, 99% of the times, uh, will only set uh, once for any site. Now, since we're in stable, in uh, beta mode, uh, currently we haven't um, we haven't changed many. Uh, we haven't actually uh, changed a lot of things in the front end. Uh, what we want to do two things essentially two things are important for us for the key to team. Uh, one is backwards compatibility, and that means that. Despite all the big changes that have come into K2, it's essentially rewritten from the ground. Um, if you're using K2 uh, version 2 and uh, you are in Juno 2.5 or 3, and you can, of course, update to the latest Juno 3 version, that means you will be able to update to K2 version 3 uh, without having to worry about anything. Your site uh, will be updated with the latest version of K2. Your code will work seamlessly. And most of all, any changes that you have done in the K2 uh, sub-templates will work flawlessly. Uh, this is a major task, and we've actually built a compatibility layer for that, which does not add, excuse me, which does not add any performance overhead whatsoever to K2. And uh, the approach that we're following in the front end for K2 is essentially um, making things a lot simpler. So what that means is that uh, we previously had uh, different separate files for the category, the tag view, uh, the user view, and so on. Uh, we plan to offer the option for these to be merged, but also to be extended if required. This, this means that... Um, and with uh, an additional tool that will be added in K2 to allow for installing additional uh, custom uh, K2 sub-templates. This will allow extension developers uh, to design their templates to be compatible with K2 in less time and also be able to offer these uh, sub-templates that they create for their templates as installable packages for K2 to use on a different template if required. So if you say if you bought templates from Rocket Team and Rocket Team could support K2, um, create a set of K2 overrides uh, for their latest template that you like, you will be able to grab these overrides and install them on another uh, Rocket Team table, uh, template for your K2 website. So going back to the front end, you'll see that uh, Little has changed. Actually, uh, for the end user, uh, the changes are very minimal. You will notice that we've ditched the item toolbar. Yeah, we've we've ditched some of the controls. Uh, we've ditched the uh, rating option, which will now be offered as a plugin in K2. And the, the design will be slightly changed and updated. Uh, before the stable release in order to be fully responsive and um, uh, even more, even easier for template developers uh, to style for their templates. We have the user view as always, the tag view, we have the latest items view. All of these will be a little bit modernized and simplified in terms of uh, uh, code. The good news for a template developer is that CSS will be uh, significantly, uh, the CSS will be significantly simplified. So like I said, this will mean less development time for uh, uh, style and K2 as they seek fit for their uh, template designs. 
So we also have the modules are essentially the same. Um, what has changed, and uh, it's it's not yet reflected in uh, this better release, is that we now have that we will have uh, the option to this is a bare bones view of the, of the primary content module in K2 but this will change this this will reflect uh, the, the design the design is not defined the they will resemble the settings page uh, in K2 and it will allow us to create uh, a mechanism to display uh, only the fields that we need to uh, display for the module parameters this this means that we, we, we will be able to offer a different sub-templates for uh, the K2 modules uh, with additional controls. So imagine a slideshow module for K2, for the K2 content module, sorry, a slideshow view for the K2 content module that has additional parameters uh, for, say, uh, the delay between sliding uh, contents and the pause and the uh, transition time. So this is this is still a work in progress. The module is still a work in progress. Uh, but like I said, the good news is that uh, when you upgrade to Ju to K2 three, uh, K2 version three, uh, you won't need to worry about migrating anything or reworking your website or you know all the bad things that we've seen in the past with other major components. This would be a very seamless. Um, uh, procedure for, for any Joomla K2 user. So before uh, wrapping things up, I'm just going to um, uh, say a few things about K2, uh, some things under the hood. Uh, this is primarily for developers. We're uh, extending even further the JSON API for K2. This means that you will be able to use Joomla and K2 as the basis for other applications. So if you're offering your client uh, Joomla and K2 website, uh, your client uh, can easily create a mobile application uh, using the JSON API that's built into K2. There are significant changes in performance under the hood. We've changed the way the category table is uh, organized. Uh, other changes include um, Give me a second. Uh, you now have the option to have unlimited uh, resized copies of the primary K2 image that you upload. Previously, you only had five dimensions created. I'm talking about the K2 primary image. Uh, this allows, this, this will essentially uh, uh, cover two use cases. The naggers, those that a complaint that uh, K2 was filling up the disk, uh, the site's disk space, and uh, the advanced users who require more than five uh, resized dimensions of the K2 image. Additionally, uh, we now uh, hook up cloud storage uh, services like Amazon S3 or uh, Microsoft's Azure uh, Cloud, so you can literally offload all your static assets, images, videos, galleries, and so on, uh, to these uh, cloud storage providers. The entire process is completely asynchronous, which means that saving your item is will now be a lot faster for users. Like I said previously, the extra field system has been uh, completely rewritten. Uh, it's now very easy even for uh, uh, web designers to create their own uh, extra fields and programmatically extend K2's item category and user forms. Comments in the front end have been uh, reworked, as I hope, uh, as you'll see here. No, we don't have comments enabled here. Uh, but essentially what we've done is now comments are um, uh, they are fully AJAX, which means uh, that we hit the, uh, you can jump over to different pages of your comments without reloading the page. And the comment submission process is a lot faster. And don't forget that 
comments, the comment system in K2 already has um, recapture and ActSmith integrated, which means that spam is literally uh, degraded to zero for your website. Uh, hey, Fotis. I think we've basically covered all things in K2. Hey, Fotis. Yes. We have about 10 minutes left, and we have a ton of questions from people. Do you mind if I shoot you some questions one by one? Yes, of course. Uh, do I get to see these questions, uh, Steve? No, I'll read them to you. OK. Uh, do you have more information about the pro version? And will it be a commercial version? Yes, the pro version will be a commercial version. and. Uh, uh, it will extend on the core features uh, with uh, things that uh, more advanced users and essentially professionals will want to use. Like I mentioned previously, uh, we will offer the option to import content from WordPress, Tumblr, and other CMSs. This is one of the pro options. Additionally, <clears throat> there will be options uh, to, fully, um, to fully edit an image like crop it, apply filters, uh, literally um, edit any image uh, that you want to use as your K2 item image. So this is an advanced editing feature uh, for the image tab in the K2 item form. Um, and this is something that's, that will be part of the Pro uh, release. Cool, thanks. This is what this is only one of the features. These are only two of the features that we plan to add. Um, there are other side features, like uh, there will be accompanying uh, components to K2, like uh, a component called Fill It Up. This is a component that allows to generate K2 items uh, very fast. It's what we've used in the demo site to generate all these 10,000 items that you can see. So this is, this is for example, ideal for template developers who want to click, quickly set up a demo site full of actual meaningful content, uh, meaningful, you know, uh, well-presented content for uh, the demo sites. Cool. We have about uh, about 10 questions and about 10 minutes left, so I'll try and get through them quickly. I'm going to be more swift. <laughs> Will you be able to have extra fields that include URLs? Yes, of course. We already do that in the way. OK, here's the inevitable question. When is K2 version 3 being released? Uh, the, beta, the beta is already available to download. The stable will be ready at the end of September, early October, uh, most. That okay. Is. If you are using K2, should you use it instead of the core Joomla articles or in addition to it? Uh, our proposal is, of course, to use it as your primary uh, content source within Joomla. Uh, part, uh, of course, as, as you can understand, if you work with K2, um, it's not that easy to go back to Joomla content because K2's content is a lot more uh, rich in terms of uh, options, uh, in terms of content options. For example, you don't have uh, the gallery feature in the uh, uh, Joomla articles or the video feature. So, it would be back. It would be difficult to go back to the Joomla article system. What we what we essentially preach is that K2 is a native uh, Joomla component. Uh, it fulfills all the Joomla component development standards. It's been around since 2009. It's been on the most popular websites built with Joomla in the world. So it's a safe bet. And uh, these are just our base uh, arguments for using K2. Uh, there are more arguments to that, and of course, these arguments apply to the flexibility that you have when you use K2. Uh, templating, creating the overrides, so essentially making your website uh, uh, show the way you want is a lot easier when using K2 instead of the core article manager. And that's let's 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 not hide this, uh, Steve. That this is not a bad thing. This is a good thing. Joomla is a platform. Uh, the Joomla uh, article system is, is a basic article system which fulfills the needs for, a base, for basic uh, small websites. 
If you want to go further than that, you have to go with K2. In a way, you will never use the Arctic system to build an e-commerce website with Juno, right? So why not do this uh, with your content if you're serious about it? Uh, does K2 replace the need for an editor like Joomla content editor, like JCE? No, no, no. Uh, actually, uh, we've uh, worked with uh, Ryan Denver, the developer of JC, and as you can see, I don't know if my screen is still viewable, but as you can see, we now have the full page width available to JC. And uh, we know for a fact that the new version of JC will offer some kind of uh, split screen mode for working with either code or markdown to HTML. So I would say that JC is the, the an, an ideal fit for uh, uh, for K2 for managing the content with K2. Of course, any other WYSIWYG editor in Joomla will work with K2, as it's always had. Um, are there any improvements to the way that K2 handles media? Uh, like I said, the Apple process is now asynchronous, so you will notice that saving uh, an item that has images, galleries, videos, and so on uh, a lot faster. Uh, you now have the option to have multiple image galleries instead of just one image gallery, as it was with K2 version 2. And likewise, you can have multiple media uh, elements. So you can have two videos, say, and one audio file. And with the addition of the uh, new extra field system, you can easily create your own uh, media fields if you want. So it's, it's very, a lot more powerful when it comes to content presentation and uh, content design. And let's not, let's not forget that now with K2 version 3, um, you can have multiple sets of extra fields applied to the same category. So you can have multiple sets of extra fields being applied to different parts of your uh, item uh, page. So yes, all in all, yes, media management uh, through the core features of K2 and the option that you have uh, through extra fields has been greatly improved. Okay, I'm going to close with trying to wrap up a series of questions about the, um, about the front end. We've mainly looked at the admin side of K2 so far. Um, a lot of people are asking, are there a similar amount of changes to the front end to the way that K2 displays uh, templates, uh, images, media galleries, and so on? The basic prim principles have been kept, and uh, this is to allow for backwards compatibility. As you can understand, this is very important. You have to be able to uh, simply install on top the new K2 and have your site working in a few minutes. Uh, with that in mind, we've simplified uh, the views, uh, I mean the actual code and the CSS. We've actually merged the HTML in some places. Um, so this will make creating the overrides a lot simpler. Uh, it's going to be a simpler option. But all in all, K2 is already a very feature-rich um, option for presenting your content in Joomla. Uh, and with the, with the addition of having uh, the ability to um, apply multiple extra fields, multiple sets of extra fields to your item view, uh, this gives even greater um, flexibility in content presentation for your item. And for version 3.1, we do plan on offering a visual mechanism within the K2 uh, category form that will allow you to essentially move uh, all the K2 item elements. So think of it as a, a tool to basically create your own overrides by dragging and dropping elements on the screen and saving what you produce as different overrides for you to develop to to use for your site. So in version 3.1, the whole process uh, will be uh, something that, you, uh, that you'll do from the back end of K2 alone. Okay, so... Uh, with minimal coding in the front end. 
So the, the final question, which will help other people, is they have quite a few more questions about K2. What's the best way to contact you to follow up with uh, questions about K2 in general? Uh, I think, uh, well, social media for one. Uh, they can use the contact forms on our websites. Uh, I would say the K2 community is probably the best place because uh, stuff that viewers can ask there will be documented and new users can see and uh, respond as well. But of course, if it's small questions, anyone can uh, use social media, our Twitter account, uh, at JumaWorks, and our Facebook page, uh, JumaWorks as well, uh, to contact us at any time. Oh, wonderful. Thank you very much indeed, Fotis. Thank you, Steve. I wish you a great Juma 3 day.